All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Is this thing on? We just recorded the entire episode uh, for today's NBA show with no audio. It's been posted for like 40, uh, 30, 40 minutes or so. Uh, and yeah, the audio is just corrupt on the file. So we're redoing it here. So forgive me if we kind of speed through it. Uh, this, is, uh, this is tough and annoying. But nonetheless, welcome back to the channel. We got a five-game NBA slate to dive into in today's video. Like we always do when we go through each and every one of these games, I'm going to give you my lean on the spread. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any player props that I like within the game as well but as always keep an eye on the pin comment for all of my final plays that is where all of my final plays what we actually count towards the record will be if you do want to fade me or if you want to ride with me but uh yeah hit that subscribe button hit that like button uh didn't think we'd be doing this video twice today so let's go ahead and jump in we have the heat taking on the 76ers in this spot uh, a few injuries to note Unfortunately, we may, uh, this could be a really good game, right? But we may not see Maxi. he's questionable. We may not see Tobias Harris, he's questionable. And Joel Embiid is questionable as well. He did come back last game. Um, I do think there's a little bit of, you know, playoff implication here for both sides. So I'm hoping everybody does play. But like I'm saying, uh, there is a chance that we see, uh, you know, a, a sort of makeshift version of this Heat roster, excuse me, of the Sixers roster. On the Heat side of things, uh, kind of business as usual. We have Tyler Hero is out, and then, um, you know, no one else in the injury report. So, should be a healthy enough team in terms of uh, what we're seeing on the Heat side of things. Heat right now, three and a half point favorites, total at 209 and a half. And, you know, it's funny because I've already gone through all these games, so I feel like I'm, like, reading a script here. Uh, but I like the Sixers if they're healthy in this spot. If they're not healthy, if all three of those guys uh, don't play, like, even if, Ty, uh, you know, Tobias Harris is out, uh, you know, the one of the three, probably the third most important, I'd probably pass on it. But um, I didn't really like what I saw out of the Heat last game. Uh, yes, they beat the Knicks 109-99. to 99. It looks pretty good. But that literally took a million points from Terry Rozier. Uh, Bam out of bio, turned it on late in the game, but he didn't have the best game. Jimmy Butler started off hot and just went absent, and then no one else really stepped up other than uh, Hayward Highsmith, so to me, that wasn't like a great Heat game, and if this is going to be what, you know, looks like Vegas is predicting a low-scoring game, I'll take the three and a half points if the Sixers are healthy, um, so keep that in mind there. I know Vegas has that two and nine and a half, right? I do think, you know, the Sixers score more points when Embiid's in there. If they get Maxi back as well, we should see a little bit more up-tempo. And I don't necessarily know if the Heat are going to have all of the defensive answers there. Like, yeah, it looks great that they stopped um, the Knicks, you know, and, and held them to 99 points. But the Knicks didn't really have their best game overall either. So, uh, again, like, yeah, the Heat win, it looks impressive. They weren't firing on all cylinders. So I don't think that this game goes under. Slight lean to the over in my spot here. And again, this should be a game where these guys want to play. Uh, right now, the Heat sitting in the sixth seed. Um, they're tied with the Pacers, uh, essentially games back-wise, but, um, you know, one less loss. And the Sixers here, a game and a half back from that seven-slash-six seed as well. So, uh, you know, with only a handful of games left in the year, that game and a half could be a big deal here. So I do think that, you know, we should see Embiid. We should see Maxi. Like, unless they're saying, all right, we've really got to be healthy for the playoffs. This game doesn't matter. We should see them today. So if they're healthy... I think I do end up leaning towards the, uh, the the Sixers in this spot. The Sixers don't have a back-to-back. -back. This is the first leg of a back-to-back -back for the Heat as well, so I'll throw that in there. And then from a player prop perspective, we're obviously waiting for um, a lot of these game-time decisions to be sort of confirmed, so no player props as of right now. Next up, we have New York taking on the Kings right now. Knicks, three-and-a-half-point favorites at home total, sitting at 214. Uh, the Knicks, you know, they won a decent amount of games. They hadn't played anybody prior to the Heat, right? Uh, their hardest game was against OKC. They lost that game, and that was without Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Um, other than that, it was Brooklyn, Detroit, Toronto, San Antonio. They play Miami and don't look all that great. Sacramento has actually played, you know, Orlando, Dallas twice. They played the Clippers. They've been battle tested a little bit more here and this is another game in which you know we are going to want to see uh, both teams play Josh uh, in, in, in be healthy Josh Hart is questionable for the Knicks Malik Munt out for the the uh, the Kings here but I think both teams are going to want to try and get their best guys out there and play their best basketball because right now the Kings sitting in the eight spot just a game ahead of the Lakers uh, so you know uh, they could also they're half game back of the seven spot for the um, the Sun or the Sun slash Pelicans so maybe they're trying to work their way out of a play in situation and then you have 
have the Knicks on the other hand who uh, you know are just about I think it's a game back of Orlando so both teams have some sort of playoff standing implications here they should be trying which we have to note at this time in the NBA season but I think I'm going to take just like I did with game number one here on the slate I think I'm going to take the points this Kings team has covered um, in plenty of games on the road I believe it's 60 yeah 62 percent of games they've covered on the road this season um, you could make the argument that you know they're looking ahead to the Celtics tomorrow night which isn't necessarily the best spot the the Knicks also on a back-to-back here but I would say for Sacramento it's like if you have two games you have the Knicks then the Celtics regardless of what happens in this game it's going to be damn hard to win that Celtics game and wins you do want to win games still for both these teams right at this point in the season via the playoff standings and whatnot so I think Sacramento goes balls to the wall today and tries to take an outright win against the Knicks and again this is more strength of schedule based on their last five or six games uh, than anything like the Knicks they play one good team and they get beat by 10 points the Kings I'd put in that good team territory definitely better than uh, you know the aforementioned teams uh, Thunder without Shea um, San Antonio Toronto Detroit Brooklyn right Uh, and last time they did play I believe it was in Sacramento and the Knicks won by by a handful right so this could be a little bit of a uh, bounce back sort of uh, revenge spot for the uh, the Kings as well which these two teams have been pretty damn even uh, as of late against one another when it comes to player props uh, and I can't believe I have to say this again now because we uh, we, we talked about it already in and well you guys didn't hear it because there's no audio but I like De'Aaron Fox under 25 and a half points today tough matchup versus the Kings. This is obviously predicted to be a pretty low scoring game in which I do like the under as well, uh, just because I think that's where the Kings um, or that's where the Knicks kind of put their mark on this game and slow it down. And the Kings haven't been playing that fast either. They're bottom 10 team in terms of pace over their last 10. But I like Fox. He's hit this in three straight, two straight games against the Kings here. He's hit the under in nine of his last 10 games. Um, And I also don't mind taking a flyer for plus 120. You could take over six and a half assists. It's a lot. I understand that. But he's been averaging nearly 11 potential assists per game against the uh, the Knicks here in his last two meetings. He's averaged 13 potential assists. He's on seven and nine assists against them. If the Knicks blitz him or anything at all, assists may open up for him. So in terms of ranking those, I like his under 25 and a half points because I think it's just a little bit too high. Um, and I also, you know, secondarily, maybe a sprinkle on a plus 120 play at over six and a half assists. All right, guys, before we do jump into the rest of the show, I do want to talk to you about Odds Jam. If you guys have not checked out Odds Jam yet, I'll have a link in the pinned comment. You get seven days free. Use code GUYBOSTON. You get 25% off. But we're on the positive expected value screen right now, which what this does is it identifies mistakes by sportsbooks in the market. For example, NC State here, plus 8.5 in their game on Saturday, plus 105 over on Fanatics. It's minus odds on average on sportsbooks. Minus 105 on DraftKings. Minus 105 on... Um, ESPN bet minus 115 on Caesars you can get this at plus 105 on Fanatics and if you don't believe me that this stuff works we've been tracking our plus EV bets for the last few months here Um, and let me open it up actually you could see start to April here three straight profitable days. We date back to this year, right? January, we had a crazy good green all over the place day. Um, We had a February of, you know, just under 300 bucks. March, we were a little bit lazy, kind of busy. We didn't bet positive EV every single day. Still profited in April. Again, off to a crazy start of plus 324 in terms of that. And again, that's literally like set it and forget it type betting. Um, It's just using math to conquer the sports book. So go check it out, guys. Link in the pinned comment. Again, you get seven days free as well as 25% off when using code Guy Boston. Next up, we got the Mavs taking on the Hawks. This would be a better game if Trey Young was playing because we have that little, like, subtle, I don't even know if it's subtle, Luka versus Trey matchup and rivalry. But right now, we have a pretty healthy Dallas team. No Josh Green or Derek Lively, but those don't really compare to the injuries, in my opinion, with Okongu and Trey Young out for Atlanta. This is a big number. But I have to lean towards the Mavs in this spot. They are the better team coming off of a loss to Golden State. I don't really see a world in which, um, you know, Atlanta wins this game. The problem is 11 and a half points is a lot to ask for, right? So uh, it's a slight lean towards Dallas. I also am going to lean towards the over in this spot, um, given the fact that we should see two defenses that are not necessarily like uh, tried into amazing defenses. I will say Dallas's uh, defensive efficiency over the last three games. Pretty damn good, but Atlanta could expose them, um, you know, from shooting the three ball and everything like that. Uh, What I will say is um, Dallas has been scoring at the rim tremendously over their last 10 games. Atlanta 
mediocre to bad at that. So that's where I think Dallas could pull away. Obviously, you have the mid-range, and um, you know, no matter who's covering Kyrie or Luka, they can score. But at the rim there, we could see some buckets from Dallas to get some easy points. So again, I'm going to like the over, even though we haven't seen much of uh, Atlanta running and gunning as of late. Dallas has been playing with some pace, and both these defenses, absolutely terrible in transition. So if they do run, you know, we could see a, you know, a 235 type of a, a finish here. So give me Dallas, slight lean on the spread there, uh, as well as the over 235. All right, we got the Rockets taking on the Warriors in this one. Only injury to note is going to be Jonathan Kaminga. He's listed as questionable in this spot. I do like the Warriors, even though the Rockets are super hot. They have dropped two straight games. And when I was on Kyle Kerms' show, uh, the live show, shout out to the sauce. Um, we were on the live show. We were talking about this game against Minnesota that Houston just lost, right? This Houston team played cupcake teams and won, what, 10, 11 games in a row. I want to see them show resilience before we bet on them to be resilient. And what I mean by that is after they're losing, losing, you know, two games in a row, before I bet on them to win a game, I want to see that they can do that. And then I'll feel a little bit more comfortable doing that. So give me Golden State in this spot. They've definitely been playing better basketball. They haven't had the hardest strength of schedule either, but harder than Houston. They've won five straight games here, covered in four of those five. They've been favorites in four of those five as well. So um, I'll give them credit there. I do Really hope that Kaminga's playing because I like his matchup scoring down low as well. Um, but yeah, give me the Warriors minus the three and a half points. In terms of the total, we are looking at Houston at home, which I've said all along, this Houston team is a little bit different at home. Um, their points per game at home drops, uh, excuse me, their, their opponent points per game at home drops to a uh, the sixth best in the league, the fourth best uh, home team when it comes to defensive efficiency. So I think they have their mark uh, on that spot in terms of being able to secure an under here. But again, I like Golden State minus the points in this spot. And I feel like I'm flying through these games, which you guys are probably like, why don't you do this all the time? But uh, yeah, you know, second time's a charm, I guess. All right, Clippers taking on the Nuggets. One thing I will say here is we're going to want to wait to see the injuries. Jamal Murray, who I think I've seen multiple sites say he's going to be out for, you know, a week or so. Uh, he's listed as questionable right now on what I'm looking on Rotowire. Uh, Aaron Gordon and Jokic listed as questionable but likely to play here. And then Kawhi Leonard already listed as out for the Clippers. So there are tons of injuries to monitor before placing anything in this game. Um I like Denver. I do think that, you know, I'm, I'm going to be critical of Denver down the stretch when they have these games against the Spurs and whatnot where they're minus 16. And it's like, yeah, they can win just like they did against the Spurs a couple nights ago, right? Where they win 110 to 105. They still get the win. That helps them try and go for that one seed. But they're taking their foot off the gas in terms of like stomping on teams because they don't want Jokic to get injured. Aaron Gordon, Murray, anybody to get injured in these late game situations, meaning by the time they're up 10 in the fourth quarter, there's going to be some bench action. This game isn't in that boat. This should be a competitive game. It's only a four-point spread. Give me Denver minus the four points. Um, in terms of the total in this spot, I do think it kind of turns defensive. I could see this being like a 210 finish. This is a, a preview of what we could see um, in the playoffs. Like, I'm not going to jump the gun and say, hey, is this a Western Conference Finals preview? But it definitely could be, especially if both teams are healthy. So let's treat this like a playoff game. Let's see some defense and slow pace. And, you know, everyone's acting like every basket is so critical. It's taken double the amount of time to get there. From a player prop perspective, I don't mind Michael Porter Jr. over two and a half threes. I think there's a way to attack this Clippers team as of late. Um, and, you know, it's going to be from the above the break three. They're allowing almost a 41% hit rate from above the break. So give me Michael Porter Jr. to make three threes tonight. I like that spot for him. And guys... Very, very quick episode here. Uh, only five games to talk about. Let me know what you guys are rolling with in the comments. I will shout out the ride of the day and everything now because we were behind. So um, yesterday we ended up going two and one, right? We'll take the cha-ching. We already talked about it. I feel weird talking about a positive day. Uh, you know, <laughs> we already talked about it. It was muted in the first video. We're recording again. There's our recap from yesterday. We'll take it a two and one night. And the ride of the day comes through from Wayne here at Clint Capella over one and a half blocks said give me a chance we gave him a chance he cashed it so shout out to Wayne here if you guys don't know what the ride of the day is use that hashtag ride of the day in the comments and I'll be jumping on board with one person's pick giving you a shout out in the next video win or loss also shouting you out over on my socials make sure you guys are following me there mainly on Twitter and Instagram these have all been rotating there throughout the show um, and yeah 
if you win the ride of the day, we continue to ride with you. So we're going to be looking for Wayne's play again today. But make sure you guys get your other plays because I love reading what everyone is rolling with in the comments. And uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it sucks to have to do this again. But you know what? Thank you guys in the comments for roasting me, being like, I can't hear the video, all that. Um, when I played on my end, uh, it was working. And now I open the file again and it's going. I'm like, oh, God damn. So. We redid it, all right? So, guys, hope you guys did enjoy the redo here. We kind of sped through it, but we knew what we were going to say, right? So, hope you guys do enjoy. We'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.